Who you got? Who? Does it make your list? Which one of these is your favorite? Dead or alive? Who? Take your pick. It's your choice. Just don't boot list. Tell us what you want in your top five. And we gotta know the reason. Let's take a deep dive. If you're the same as mine, I'll be your number one supporter. Now relax and enjoy the podcast. It's no order. All right. Welcome to the stream, y'all. Welcome to the stream. We are the No Order Podcast. We can be found on Twitch at True Hogs Club. Twitch.tv slash True Hogs Club. No Order Podcast on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you stream your podcast, you can find Baron Doe on the No Order Podcast. Feel free to check out some of our previous episodes and get yourself some merch. Cop some for your girl too if you want. We got beanies, we got hats, we have shorts, sweats, everything for you. Sweaters, yeah, we got it all. So just none of those uh, fitted things. Uh, But we got snapbacks and we got baseball caps. We could make trucker hats, but I'm wearing uh, my Super Mario Bros. one right now. We got Bear in the studio. How's it going, Bear? How you feeling, bro? What's happening, though? I'm doing good, man. Awesome, man. Glad to hear. Excited for this podcast that we got lined up here today. Oh, definitely. This is going to extremely help a lot of people out there and uh, open their eyes to some of the things they probably were too scared to or not even knowledgeable of. Yeah, for sure. To become a little bit more financially stable or independent uh, independent into Excel for sure. So definitely juice for this latest No Order podcast. Feel free to support us on Patreon today at No Order. You can find us. Just check for the logo. We're up here and around True Hogs Club and the No Order podcast logo and get yourself some merch once again. We are just going to hop right into this one. I want to introduce our guest today, who is the owner and CEO of Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors, my homeboy for quite a long time. We go way back. So definitely want uh, y'all to give a warm no order podcast. Welcome to Phil. Phil, how you doing today, bro? Hey, brother. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's good to see you guys. It's good to connect with you all. And I'm really excited about doing this podcast today, too. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. This is uh, obviously a near near and dear topic to my heart. That's what's up. Yeah, and we're, we're glad you were able to, you know, come on and, you know, show us some stuff because, you know, obviously people have to, you know, learn about it in any which way and form because, you know, it's not like the schools teach you or anything. It's self-taught and, you know what I mean? You got to find all the loopholes and everything. They, you know, or not even loopholes, just, you know, people, you know, didn't know that you could do this. Yeah, yeah. No, that's so real, like on both accounts, right? So it's in most states, it's not a requirement to teach financial literacy, right? Like at, at best, especially when we were growing up, it was half half a semester of economics or maybe a full semester of economics. Uh, I don't know what it was like for you guys, but they paired it with American history, yeah. which they're basically like, hey, guys, two very important topics. We're just going to breeze right through it. <laughs> Hopefully something sticks. Yeah. Um, We're just going to introduce yeah. it to you for about yeah. a week, and then you're going to take a test, and then we're going to move on. And go back to whatever else you want to do. And if you don't pass econ, you get to stay for another year. (laughs) (laughs) For real. For real. There's there's a ton to there's a ton to unpack there for sure. Yeah, so we're getting ready to do that. We do want to unpack it here with you. So uh hey, the floor is yours. We got the top five reasons or top five ways to become a millionaire. Is is that what you got here for your top five? Best practices, maybe? We'll be a little fluid with it, cool. reasons, ways, methods, whatever you want to call it. These these are top five in, in no particular order. Right? Top five in no order. Join us on the No Order podcast. You can see Phil us got it on, down. He knows. Yeah, you know no how order. it goes. No order, no order. <laughs> top five dead or alive ways to become a millionaire here with Phil from Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors. Phil, before we get into your top five, you want to give us a little bit of uh, background on yourself and why you're maybe the authority on this or 
have good insight on becoming a millionaire, top five ways to become a millionaire. Sure, sure, sure. So I I think for for a lot of people like me and and a lot of people out there, uh, it all started with, you know, just living in a household, growing up in a household where money was tight. Right. So uh, things were kind of good initially. Parents Mm -hmm. got divorced. Now I'm living at home with my mom, single mom status, two kids, you know, and then eventually she got remarried and everything and things got a little bit better. Mm -hmm. But uh, that that kind of experience, which is very common, I think, in our generation and and for a lot of people, kind of gives you with this sense of instability. And so. Uh, For me, I I come from a military family, so I kind of knew the benefits of going into the military, but I I joined out of high school because college, affording college wasn't an option. It wasn't like I learned some trade while I was in high school. Like I was doing, I think, what most high school students do, which is like working at fast food places and amusement parks, you know, just trying to scrape up enough money for gas to put in the car to make it to work. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And I think a lot of people have that very similar experience as far as maybe being from single parent home, also possibly having family that's military, if you're a military brat, so to speak, quote unquote, or uh, just, you know, scraping by maybe middle class or lower middle that? class. Um, so tell us a, a little bit more uh, about that background there, Phil. Yeah, sure. So so I joined the military right out of high school. I, I said to myself, because the internet had just come out, which is kind of like mind blowing to me. Like it was, it was just accessible at that point, right? Like, so I think like my junior or senior year of high school, we got a desktop computer, mm-hmm. uh, dial up internet, you know, the beep, boop, beep, boop, Oh, boop. I remember that, the square, <laughs> and you just see it transferring <laughs> over. guy is running. <laughs> yeah. um, that was before uh, DSL, you know? You know? Right. I, I remember, so I don't know if you guys watch it, but I would, I would watch Dragon Ball Z when I was like in high oh, school. definitely. Hell Still yeah. watch it. Shout out to all our so, Dragon Ball Z fans in the chat. All right. All right. <laughs> so, I, you know, I'd, I'd want to print out like pictures, right? And I remember it taking like two, three minutes for this stuff to load, <laughs> right? But I was so into it. I was like, man, this is awesome. But I said to myself, hey, this internet thing's not going away. So when I joined the Army, I signed up for a technical role that had to do with telecommunications. Uh, turned out to be a great Good decision. Good call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, turns out. Um, but so I was in the Army for seven and a half years, did a deployment to Iraq and Afghanistan. But it was during that first deployment to Iraq that uh, for the first time in my life, I had more money coming in than my expenses, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like 20 years old. And it wasn't that I was getting paid a lot. It's just that when you go on deployment, your expenses drop to zero. Mm -hmm. You don't have rent. They're paying for all your food. You can put all these things on pause, right? Like you call up the phone company and say, hey, uh, I'm deploying, you know, don't don't charge me for my phone bill and they'll do that for you, right? Mm -hmm. So I had excess money for the first time in my life, didn't know what to do with it, didn't have the training because the educational system didn't teach me anything. My parents didn't know any better, right? Because they were coming from that background. And uh, so I was curious and now I had the internet, right? Like I was a telecommunications guy. I was like, this is how I solve my problems. I go on the internet, you know, and this is like pre-Google too, right? Mm -hmm. So this is like Yahoo, like was dominating. (laughs) So I jump on there and I'm looking at stuff. And one of my bosses like noticed that I was taking an interest in it. And he's like, hey, Phil, you should read some actual books about this stuff. And uh, so it wasn't until after the deployment was over, I started reading books about it. And it really lit a fire in me because I was like, and this isn't super complicated and I can implement some of this stuff. So I started doing that. And uh, what ended up happening is I ended up accumulating about a hundred thousand dollars in assets before I got out of the military. And uh, I got out of the military when I was like 25, right? And, and like, so that was a lot of money for a 25 year old to accumulate. But I had, you know, probably a couple years during my second deployment, uh, this one's Afghanistan, I'd said to myself, 
I think I can make a living doing this finance thing, which I'm really passionate about. Uh, so let me pursue that. Let my contract expire. Then I started going to college. Spent six years in college because I did the four-year undergrad and the two-year MBA. Got a degree in finance in undergrad. Then in the MBA, I did competitive strategy and finance. Started I was on the Van Wilder college. program myself too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. To me, college was a little bit like a vacation after doing like the grinded out sort of lifestyle that the military had, especially the first few years of college. I was like, this is great, man. I'll, I'll do this forever if you want to let me do yeah. this. No more 5 a.m. wake up calls to go run in. You could <laughs> pick your classes for 11 a.m. start. Yeah, yeah. And I remember that last year I was in the, in the army, like doing some of those like 5 a.m. wake up calls to go on like these long ruck marches, which is basically like you put your kit on and you put like this oversized bag on your back and you go for like 12 miles, right? And it's time. And I was like laughing, like almost hysterically towards the end. And this, this chief that was in my unit at the time, a chief warrant officer, he's like, Phil, what's so funny? And he's like, I, I told him, I was like, I'm never doing this again. This is <laughs> So I, I saw a different path for myself, mm -hmm. went to school, got out into corporate America, worked at Johnson & Johnson and their corporate finance organization for a while. Then I jumped over to IBM for a little bit doing sales there because I felt like I couldn't be behind the computer all day. I wanted more of that human interaction. Uh, so working in with computers and robots? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was on the sales side cool. instead yeah. of the technical <laughs> side. So it was less robots, um, more people. Uh, but we still got to play with robots sometimes. We got, we, I mean, they've got some fun stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, some of it's kind of creepy, but a lot of it's just fun. We can have a whole conversation about that. Too. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> For another day. <laughs> yeah. Maybe after this. Yeah, right. Um, top five technologies that are going to take over the world. Yo. Oh, uh, hey. You already <laughs> see it coming. After that, I, while I was at IBM, I hit like my financial independence number, right? Which is basically like, I kind of refer to it as escape velocity. Like I don't need to save anything else. I could not do anything and live off of the capital gains and dividends for the rest of my life. Like I, I, I ran the numbers and it was like, I'm good for another 120 years. I was like, okay, I, th I think that's enough, right? Like we can- we You'll can be long gone by then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, what do I want to do then? Like, how do I want to spend my time? And mm -hmm. it really boiled down to finding that perfect cross section of doing finance work because I love finance and I'm a finance geek and working with people that I enjoy where I can feel like I'm making an impact in their life. And that was being a financial advisor. So that's how I, that's how I got the idea to do Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors is I, I wanted to help people out with something that I was passionate about. So I, I created the business from the ground up to, to serve people who are military service members or veterans or their families, specifically because I love that community, but also because the big financial institutions that are out there right now, because they don't have a lot of money that they can put in an account which those financial institutions can just start siphoning money off of. Mm. So that business model doesn't work if you're living off of a pension yeah. or you're getting disability or something like that. So I built my business in a way that I can service that community and make financial advice accessible to them. So um, we do want to hear a ton about Stars and Stripes Financial, and we are going to take a quick commercial break before we get back into Phil's top five best ways to become a millionaire with the No Order podcast. Support the No Order podcast on Patreon today and follow True Hogs Club on Twitch. All right. And we're back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Phil, we do appreciate your service 
with the military and here on the No Order Podcast, we welcome our service men and women uh, on the podcast to join us. And we really appreciate everything that y'all do as far as, you know, being away from your family, going and putting your life on the line, first and foremost for all of us. So we can't say thank you enough for your service to our current and former uh, men and women in the military. So wanted to start off by saying that. And also we wanted to jump right into your top five best ways to become a millionaire here with the No Order podcast. What do you got for number five for us, Phil? So no particular order. In no order. <laughs> no order, yeah. Um, I, I would say uh, the first thing that I, I gotta say is you have to have some reason right? Like you can't, you can't just say, oh, this is something I want to do. You have to know why you want to do it, right? It's just like anything else. You have to have a goal and there's got to be purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. So, so when I think about like your typical person who becomes a millionaire, it's not something that happens by accident nine times out of 10. It's something that is like really intentional. And, and a lot of people, like people like me that kind of grew up in a background where money was tight, it's often sometimes linked to that, right? I, I have a, a friend of mine, he grew up and his parents were like, you know, pretty, uh, pretty heavy in, into like the hippie lifestyle. And he grew up like picking berries and, and fishing. And that was like how they fed themselves. And so because of that, it was really important to him that he never have to experience that lifestyle. So he becomes a saver and he requires that he lives in a big house. He doesn't go camping anymore ever because he got doesn't sick of it. want any, <laughs> you know, Right. Yeah. Like he just doesn't want to have that experience anymore. Well, he had so, that experience. He wants to move on to something new. And yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So whatever it's coming from, like whatever place it's coming from, for some people, it's about the family. Sometimes it's like making sure that their kids don't have to grow up how they grew up. And oftentimes I find it comes from like the desire comes from a place of I grew up in a position where we didn't have money. So I want to make sure as an adult, we do have money. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, Bear, we talked about that, your your want or your reason why, that why factor. Yeah. And I think Phil's speaking to that passion that you're mentioning. And then just that kind of deep seated or rooted, where does that come from stemming from your particular why? Well, like he talked about nine out of 10, it's you have to have a passion for something or a want and people still think that it's like, oh, this is going to happen. No, you, you still have to work and push for it, but you have a reasoning why you're pushing for it. It's mm -hmm. because that's what you want. Mm -hmm. You don't want to work a nine to five. You're going to push them for independence. Right. You have to still do the work. Which the can work be that there. lifestyle, well, you, you, your you're family, gonna that it. person. You're going to enjoy mm -hmm. it more because you're, you're now doing something you're passionate about. You're mm -hmm. now doing something that is enjoyable. So you're not working. Mm -hmm. You're just enjoying life, but you're making money right. off of it. Right. Yeah. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life type deal. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more uh, about that, Phil, and, and that reason why or that want to succeed, whether it be a person, a thing that you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to get. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think you guys really hit it, right? Like for most people, it's, it's got to be tied to some personal reason and it's got to be an evergreen reason. It's got to be something that is going to carry with you throughout your life because it, you know, on any given day, when you like accumulate that that amount of money or any any amount of money before you hit like some magical like financial independence mark or mm -hmm. millionaire mark or whatever it is you could have a midlife crisis and be like you know what i'm gonna go buy a sports car mm -hmm. done over right like i'm sure you can think of a few different cars that might cost you a few hundred thousand dollars boom it all that money's gone right like there's mm -hmm. no shortage of things you can spend your money on so it, it's a little bit of a defensive thing most of the time. It's not, 
it's not what a lot of people think it is where it's about like this conspicuous consumer lifestyle. It's really more about can I, you know, keep the ship afloat for some amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, you know, that's how that's how people actually accumulate wealth is they want to keep it. They don't want to spend it. And, and to want to keep it, you've got to have something important to you, some reason behind why you want to keep it. Mm -hmm. That's not going to go away this year or next year. So it's got to be like almost emotional, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I find being a financial advisor is for a lot of that, a lot of those people, it's something tied to when you were a kid, you know? And I think anybody who's like a counselor or a psychologist would have a field day with that. I mean, that's outside mm -hmm. of my depth. But, sure, you know? sure, sure. <laughs> but I think you're saying that it's something that's just ingrained in you. Uh, or instilled. And it takes a lot of discipline on top of that. And maybe that could be a top reason for you moving forward. So I don't want to like jump ahead on that. Maybe that goes hand in hand, though. I think uh, a lot of these things are tied together in, in that sense. But for number five on your best ways to become a millionaire with the No Order podcast, it is that want, that yeah. reason and that the why. Factor. Yeah. What's that X factor for you? Perfectly said, Bear. That X factor for you, that reasoning behind why you want to have this for that longevity, longevity's yeah. sake and, and to keep it. Maybe you're not sitting on your coins like the dragon <laughs> on those gold coins forever, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> So that, that segues nicely into uh, what I'll talk about next, and we'll call it number four. Okay, uh, number four for top five best ways to become a millionaire yeah, from Phil yeah. with Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors here on the No Order Podcast. What do you got for number four for us, Phil? All right, so number four is it, let's let's put that money to use, right? Like, let's invest that money, Okay. Right? Um, Tell and, me how. I'm taking notes. All right, all right. <laughs> So one of the one of the biggest producers of wealth in this country is having an employer sponsored retirement plan where they incentivize you to save money by doing a match. Right. So like if you've got a 401k, the your employer might say, hey, we're going to match four or five percent of your first four or five percent that you save. And that that means that you've got a savings rate of like eight to 10%, but you didn't have to save half of that, right? So that's that's a 100% guaranteed rate of return year one, um, assuming that you know the contributions vest that fast, you can't get that anywhere else. And it, and it matters so much because if there's one area that, that we're awful at as, as like people in the US, when it comes to our financial life, it's our savings rate. We just don't save enough money, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have to put that money to work by investing it in the stock market or real estate or whatever. In this case, I'm talking about employer-sponsored retirement plans. So nine times out of 10, that's, that's going to be stocks, bonds, something like that. Mm -hmm. But that starts getting the engine going for growth, right? In the right. way that the way that this works is over a 30 year career, you don't have to save a ton of money to, to be able to replace your income in retirement, right? Uh, it, it becomes more difficult the later you start because you have fewer years where your investments are building and growing. You have it, to save it, more at that point or contribute more for yep. that at a later age. And I think a lot of people don't really necessarily think that that is something that they need to do or that they should do right away when they start as young as possible for that savings. Everyone hears, oh, do you got a 401k? Oh, I do, but I only put in so-and-so amount. I don't put in the maximum. And that's that savings that it's tough for people to save, especially in this day and age with either rent or their living situation, inflation, things that are going up exponentially as far as cost and being able to do that, that's typically, or it should be a no brainer or a common sense, which isn't 
so common these days to do. But I think that's a top thing to put in your top five as far as one of the best ways to set yourselves up up financially and best ways to become a millionaire with the No Order podcast. You want to uh, tell us a little bit more about that, Phil? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. So uh, I love the way that you frame that because everything in finance is a ratio. It, it's this in relationship to that. Right. And, and when you think about, okay, do I save today, like in my 20s versus do I start saving tomorrow in my 30s? And in, in what basically the way that the math plays out is you can get away with saving like 10 to 15 percent of your income and in, in being at a replacement, like an income replacement stage when you hit retirement. But if you wait till your 30s, now you're talking about like 20 to 25 percent of your income. Right? That jumps up exponentially. That's a, a huge jump uh, between, I guess, that 10 year span or maybe if you're in your mid 20s uh, to your early 30s. Exactly. Exactly. And it's not it's not like it's impossible if you wait. You know, a lot of people wait and still make it happen. Yeah, it's never too um, late, people. So uh, definitely by no means don't just not start because you feel you're a little bit older or over the hill. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it, it goes to that point that you made, which is saving a little bit now, even though things are tight, can really make a huge impact down mm -hmm. the road. And mm -hmm. so that's what like I try to tell people is like, even if it's even if it's like 10 bucks a week or something. You know, just start. Just nothing's get that. too small yeah, to uh, start your little nest egg. Yeah, it's kind of like that pearl in the, you know, from that grain of sand. Uh, you know, oh, or, yeah. uh, just building up. But when it comes to like four hundred one ks, or like I was taught from uh, one of my uh, union reps, is whenever you get a raise, you need to add more into your four hundred one k when it comes to your to your raise time because you you have never hit that that number yet. So you don't know what you're going to make next when you get a two, three dollar raise. So if you already know that 15 percent or 10 percent, 5 percent, whatever you're at right now, keep it going. So when you get that raise, you never knew that, oh, I was going to make, you know, two thousand a week. But now I'm only making 17. You already knew I was you only know that I'm making 17 a week. And that's I, that's how I live my life. Mm -hmm. And in reality, you just been saving that much more. And it was growing that much more without you even noticing. Yeah. And trying not to live outside of your means or changing your lifestyle drastically from, yeah. from that. I think that's or, the point. Or like you, you, you were saying, like, if you have to do it later in life, well, then you should have at least something saved so that you could take away 25% and still be okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I love it. I love Bear. You like, you're reading my mind over here, right? So I'm, I'm just going to take that as a segue to number three. Okay. 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 Number three on the top five best ways to become a millionaire with Phil from Stars and Stripes Financials here on the No Order Podcast. We had number five, the want. Number four, saving with intention, I think. And number three, what do you got for us, Phil? Uh, so other, other way around. but Okay. Uh, so we did, we did the, the retirement, saving into employer sponsored retirement, but let's talk about saving with intention, right? Okay. So, you know, ju just what Bear just said, right, is what happens when you get a raise, okay? Mm -hmm. You get a raise, and then if you're not increasing what you save to, to offset that, you get lifestyle creep, right? So, mm -hmm. so I was saving 100 bucks a month. I got 100 bucks a month raise. Well, that 100 bucks in relation to my salary just shrank, right? I think you just came up with a new term I never heard before, <laughs> lifestyle creep. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that one. That one's good though. Okay. Oh, well, I'm happy to introduce it to you. I'm I can't take credit for it. It's okay. like in the in the finance space, this is a huge lifestyle creep. I've never been called a creep before, but <laughs> I do have a pretty uh frivolous lifestyle sometimes. So <laughs> tell us more about that, Phil. It's just what it sounds like, right? So mm -hmm. it's like, okay, I was saving X amount of dollars every month. And I got the pay raise, but all of it went into extra spending. But really what you need to have is you need to have a percentage of your gross income as a target. So let's, let's just pull a number out of thin air and say that's 15%. Okay. Well, if you get 
if you get that 10% raise, you need to go into the system, into your bank account, into your retirement account, whatever your saving mechanism is, and you need to adjust that up to make sure that it's still at that same 15% level, right? Mm -hmm. Because the reality is throughout your life, you're probably going to start making more and more money. And so if you just keep saving the same dollar amount throughout, it's going to be less and less impactful because you're going to get used to, you're going to become accustomed to spending more and more money, right? That certain lifestyle that you become accustomed to isn't going to match up or keep up with your investing habits. And with investing habits, would you prefer someone to have all their eggs in one basket or to spread them out? Yeah, you got it. You got to spread them out, right? Okay. Diversify uh, your bonds. Exactly. Well, like, for instance, just giving you an example for me, I have a pension, which a lot of people don't even know what that is because uh, they don't have them. They anymore. don't have them anymore. <laughs> um, I have a 401k and I have a Roth IRA. So I, I have Roth. three that are, you know, saving for me. But And you invest in stocks too, right? And I invest in stocks. But it that that's what you're uh, intentionally saying is, you know, make, make sure that, and that all covers my, what I make in, in the sense of I'm able to still live my lifestyle and have all these available to me. Is there anything yeah. he's missing where he should invest, uh, yeah. be investing in more so than those things, or maybe talk about the benefits of all those things? I'll, I'll, I'll talk a bit about both. So, Great. so first I'll hit, I'll hit that the idea of diversifying, uh, between different vehicles, right? So you just mentioned, you mentioned you've got your 401k, you've got a pension and you've got a Roth IRA, right? Correct. So with a 401k, if it's a normal pre-tax 401k, which most people have access to one of those, if you're in, in a corporate setting, money goes in. To the into the saving and investing vehicle, you don't get taxed on that money that year. When you pull it out in retirement, you get taxed on it like ordinary income. Okay, well, uh, you need to be mindful of that because you're going to have to pay those taxes down the road. Roth IRA, guess what? You pay taxes when you earn it. Money goes in, but it grows, and when you pull it out, it's not taxable, right? So now you've got two different buckets to pull from, okay? Mm -hmm. 401k, taxable. Roth IRA, not taxable. 401k, you have to pull uh, what they call required minimum distributions starting at a certain year. Basically, the government says, we think you're going to live X number of years, so you need to take out this much money every year. Otherwise, we're going to penalize you for it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. And they're like, oh, crap. And that can force you into a higher tax bracket when you retire. Right. And that's that's an issue. Right. Yes. Yeah, you absolutely. Thinking about right. Mm -hmm. You stack that on top of a pension. Right. Let's say you've got a healthy pension and like maybe that pension pays out 40K, 50K, whatever it is a year. That's ordinary income too, taxable. Right. So you need to think, OK. I've got this much of income from my pension. Now I've got this much of income from my required minimum distributions from my 401k. So you need to be thinking about it. So for some people, tax location can be a big thing because if you know I'm going to have 100k or plus of income in retirement because I've got all these assets working for me, mm -hmm. you might want to divert some of that money into Roth or post-tax assets like, like a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA, because that's going to lower your lifetime tax bill, right? So, so it's not just about diversifying, like having a lot of different types of stocks or ETFs that are, that are widely diversified between different companies you can invest in. Mm -hmm. It's not just about the strategic asset allocation. Do I have enough? stocks versus bonds versus uh, currency versus real estate, whatever, you also think about the tax vehicle that it's in and how it's going to get taxed when you start pooling that money. 
I right? see. I see. No. So I think maybe for a little bit of layman's terms, I mean, an analogy maybe that I could use with my very little knowledge on this, but for those out there listening to the No Order podcast, joining us on Twitch, maybe it's like putting that into a particular car, maybe that everyday driver opposed to that one that's going to be your weekend driver and what you have in that trunk as far as that money that's going to allow you to grow it over time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's like really where the money's at is how do I structure things so I get the best possible outcome, both in terms of like returns, but how those returns are taxed, Mm -hmm. right? So you can get a, a better after tax rate of return because I put my growth assets in, in my Roth or, or post-tax vehicles, and mm-hmm. I put my high income investments into my pre-tax vehicles because they're going to get taxed like ordinary income anyways, right? I see. I and see. so you, you get that little bit extra there that mm-hmm. can make all the difference. And then, like, I'll just, I'll just throw this out there. Let's say you've got a situation like I had where I was going to college, right? But I did that after I had been working for so long. When I was college, I wasn't making much money except for like when I was in in internships. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That meant that my tax bracket's super low. So I could take those pre-retirement or or pre-tax retirement dollars in like a normal IRA 401k, roll them over into a Roth IRA or 401k. Mm -hmm. And guess what? My total lifetime tax bill just dropped. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. Even Even though you were making more money, uh, you were able to accumulate more and not pay as much out uh, that you had coming in. Um, Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I pay a little extra that year to save a lot down the road, Mm -hmm. right? Setting yourself up for your future there in in a major way, in a major way. Yep. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll try to retire a little bit early before social security kicks in, before pension kicks in, before required minimum distributions kick in, they'll Mm -hmm. say, you know what? I'm gonna take the hit on income. I'm gonna go to zero income and I'm gonna start moving those pre-tax retirement assets into post-tax retirement assets because now the timeline there is real short. You've got like a high degree of certainty about what your taxes are gonna be. Mm -hmm. So so you can say, you know what? I'd I'd rather take that tax hit today Take Before they change it up on you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. So for that's sure. a that's a that's a fun thing. But this all ties back to being intentional about how you save yes. and how you invest, right? So are you investing in the right vehicles? Mm-hmm. Is it diversified, both in terms of what the assets you're investing in are, but also in those different tax vehicles, right? So this I, is some I just great info. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you can't go wrong with uh, those steps that you can take easily now uh, in order to with a few clicks of a button uh, just on your computer quickly to really set yourself up for success in the future. So some great info there, Phil, and great steps to becoming a millionaire with Phil's top five best ways to become a millionaire with Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors on the No Order podcast. So we had number five, that want or your why. Number four, your retirement savings. And number three, saving with intention. I think that brings us to number two here, Phil, with your top five best ways to become a millionaire with the No Order podcast here with Baron Doe. What do you got for number two? Real estate, man, real estate. Uh, And I'm not just like- This is the content that I'm here for. Yeah. (laughs) So yeah, there's real estate investing, but there's also your primary residence, right? Okay. So there's two ways to attack this. Okay. And I'll, I'll just start with your primary residence, but that's the number one store of wealth for most Americans that like 80 plus percent of Americans have most of their wealth tied up in their primary residence. Mm. And that's just simply because they appreciate over time, right? And especially the last few years, I think like the last like two years or something, housing prices have gone up like over 30%. Right? What Crazy if I live in the amount. Bay Area? Crazy amount. Wow. Yeah. Oh, 
Well, yeah, I mean, even more, right? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what your what the Bay Area looks like, but from what I've read, it's been like white hot. <laughs> Absolutely, oh, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I think I, some of the I top think even in the, world. in the in the smallest areas that are not too desirable, those even went up ten to twelve percent mm-hmm. from in within a year. So, Phil, are you recommending that we? move out of the Bay Area and buy property opposed to rent here in the Bay Area if we can? Is that what you're selling us? Is that what you're saying? Not, that's not what I'm, what I'm oh, saying. Okay. Is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that for a lot of people, they build wealth better by owning their house versus renting their house, right? And, and basically what it comes down to is Every month that you're paying on your mortgage, some of that's going towards the principal. Mm-hmm. And every month that housing prices appreciate, you're gaining equity. You're gaining equity. Your 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 net worth is growing. And I mean, just think about it, right? Your house, your home is probably going to be the most expensive purchase of your life. You're only going to do it a few times, hopefully, right? Mm-hmm. And so if if you've got a million dollar home, right? And I'm using million dollars because you guys are in the Bay Area. <laughs> so <laughs> million dollar a, closet. Yeah, yeah, a million dollar closet. Let's say you've got a million dollar closet. And that and that appreciates by 10%. That's a hundred thousand dollars of net worth or equity that you just realize. Like, yeah, you haven't cashed it out. You didn't like do a cash out refinance or you didn't sell it. But, but the fact is that that's a store of value that you can tap into through different means. And yeah, house prices, they fluctuate. We all know this. I mean, we all went through the, the Great Recession, right? Mm-hmm. We know that there's- The housing uh, crisis. Yep, yep. Ooh. Yeah, that market yeah. Uh, take a, took a major hit back then with those Balloon, loans that uh, they're interest. getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't got to pay no interest right now and then- 10 months later, you got to pay 23%. Uh, like, or you're out of that the... closet. That, <laughs> not in that way, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, you don't get to live that, there anymore. For real. Yeah. So, I mean, like you still have to be a smart consumer. And I would say that's the, the most important consumer decision that you make, right? So take your time with that. You know, and, and, and here's like a free piece of advice that like I'd be, I'll give to anybody. When you're shopping around to get your your mortgage, talk to four, maybe five different uh, loan officers and have them compete against each other. Like, hey, I just went to loan officer A. He said it's 5%. Uh, I went to loan officer B. She said it's 4.75%. Well, guess what? If you've got a million dollar house, and you're talking about the difference between a quarter percentage point, that's huge. That's and that's funny. every year, every year on that, on that uh, mortgage note, that's, that's a lot of money. Right? Phil in, dropping in those mortgage. gems of knowledge here on the No Order podcast with his top five best ways to become a millionaire. Well, look at the real estate right now. Uh, a, a lot of it stopped because the percentage is like at almost 6% for interest rate and it's like mm-hmm. well my two thousand you know dollar supposedly payment was now three thousand it's like i ah, you know it's not worth it for me right now that's that's real in in if you think about it people don't care what the sticker price is for a home because who do you know that actually pays cash for a home like nobody everybody gets a mortgage so it's all about what that monthly payment is going to be yeah so what affects that? The interest rate affects that. Your tax rate affects that, right? Like whatever your property tax is in that area. So you got to get that interest rate down. And you get that interest rate down by making them compete for your business. Hands down, like that's how you do it, right? And like one other thing I'll say on that note is you got to be mindful, right? Like if you're going to save intentionally, then you can't let your mortgage payment or your rent or whatever it is be too much of a percentage of your income, right? Like, Mm -hmm. like what I said before in finance, everything's this versus that, how it relates to one another. Living within your means. 
Exactly. Exactly. So you got to say to yourself, I'm not going to let what I spend on housing creep up above a certain percentage of my income. And in the Bay Area, maybe that's like 40 to 50% because it's super expensive out there, right? Mm -hmm. But you come to like a place in, like Atlanta, like where I'm at, I can say 20, 25%, right? Because it, it, it's just not that expensive here. And we've got, you can build out in every direction, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in the Bay Area, you, you've got north and south. Like <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much there ain't no more land over here to, right. to open up and say oh, we could put a house here. It's like. And you have to pay cash. Yeah. Well, now it's like, well, this land right here, we're going to put condos, not houses, because we could go mm -hmm. up. And we can stack make a them lot on more, top of each other you know, out there. financially for the investor. It's, it's, it's better than, Oh, well you could get a house. Right. You know, it's like, no houses are not made over here no more. I'm going to buy a parking lot. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's real money in parking lots. Don't sleep on for parking sure. lots. <laughs> <laughs> that's, cool. that's cool. I think we're here for the number one way to become a millionaire. The number one oh. way to become a millionaire with your top five best ways to become a millionaire here on the No Order Podcast, Phil. But before you do that, what's an honorable mention? You got an honorable mention for us? Uh, okay, okay. Um, I got I got a few. Can I? Yeah, throw them out. Riddle there. them off. All right, all right. So honorable mention, uh, number one, it, it's really something we've touched on and we've flirted with today, but where you live, okay? And... Uh, we've been talking about like where you live, like this city versus that city or this state versus that state. But what I want to what I want to tee people in on is locally where you live. OK, okay. so how far do you live away from the job that you have to commute to? That has a huge impact on your financial well-being. Right. A 10 minute commute versus a 45 minute commute. That's massive. You got to think about that. Time right? is money. That time is money, right? That you could be spending pursuing a passion, uh, something else, uh, improving your education so you can, you know, get to that next level in your career that you could be spending with your family. It's gas money, right? Or e even if you're in an electric vehicle, right? Mm -hmm you're driving that electric vehicle, it's not free to charge that thing either, right? It's less expensive by a lot, but it's still not free. Wear and tear on that vehicle. They did some study recently about people and their health outcomes if mm. they commute versus don't commute. And it was staggering, like the rate of like heart attacks and heart disease oh, and stuff. I got to watch out for that one then. <laughs> oh, just a little yeah, uh, remind. Uh, you know, go for it. Inside joke on that one is that I had a heart attack, so I know what you mean. <laughs> Don't worry, I survived. It wasn't yeah. because of the commute. Yeah, it wasn't because of the commute. I was actually not commuting at the time. Luckily. Now, now I'm commuting, so I might get another one. You never know. Yeah. Buy some No Order so, Podcast merch yeah. on our website so you can help pay for <laughs> Bear's stints on his triple bypass. Yeah, there you go. There it is, man. But I mean, it's, it's real, right? Like you don't need that added stress in your life. So I would say. And for know, being a commuter now, I do a hundred percent agree with you. It is a little bit of added stress on, am I going to make it there mm -hmm. on time? Is there traffic? Did a car accident happen? You know, you have to account for everything, all these variables coming in effect. And it's like, you know, yeah. Oh, did I forget my, you know, my, my lunch that I made last night. Now I have to pay for mm -hmm. something on the road, you know, little, that quality of things, life. Yeah. The little things all add up. Yeah. Your work life balance that adds to your quality of your quality of life is going to be a huge factor for people from that work from home kind of mentality here that a lot of people have. You want to yeah. touch more on, on that there, Phil? Yeah. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Right. Is, you know, be be strategic be intentional about where you live within your community relative to the grocery store relative to your job any, any place else that you might go on a regular basis right mm -hmm. you know maybe you like to go to the park and shoot hoops on the weekends whatever make sure there's a park nearby right yeah. like don't if, if that's important to you don't put yourself really far away from it 
because mm-hmm. it's just going to add, right? It's going to take away. It's going to subtract. That's really what it's going to mm-hmm. do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, just just be mindful of that. Uh, the other two honorable mentions, and they're going to be pretty obvious. Number one, who you marry, who you choose to spend your life with. That's huge. I mean, that's absolutely huge, right? Their decisions are going to affect you. They're going to affect your finances, right? So if if you marry somebody that uh, likes to party every weekend and like go hard, <laughs> then, you know, be prepared for that, right? Like that's not a wealth accumulation strategy. That's a, yeah, you know, away YOLO from what, strategy. You, what you have. Mm-hmm. Yep. yep. And I don't think Phil's telling you not to marry for love and only strictly marry for wow. finances, but uh, to each their so own. It, it really does. When you, when you sit there and talk to somebody nowadays and you're like, well, what is your plan for the future? And they're like, well, I'm comfortable where I'm at. It's like, well, if you're comfortable, you're never going to grow. You're scared of growth. So, and I'm trying to grow here. It's not going to work because that's everything you do in life is you're going to be scared of something. Oh no, let's not go to this part of the neighborhood uh, because they have the best taco truck but you could get shot. It's like, okay, but how many times do people get shot? Like rarely you just hear about it, but it not, it does it's never really happening. Yes. It's just, yes. you know, people are scared of a lot of things. So they stay in their norm and, yes. oh no, no, that's too much for me. Rose that grew from concrete, you know? Yeah. So Absolutely bear. That's definitely true is uh, just finding that person as Phil is also saying, finding that right person for what you want to become or that level that you want to get to in the future, because no, not really everyone is going to be where they want to be right away. And it's going to take time, but you're also going to find love and it's better. I mean, power in numbers, two heads are better than one, you know, working together towards a common goal is huge. So that's a great honorable mention there. What else do you got for us for honorable mentions? Last honorable mention, what your hobbies are. Right. Mm. So I love that you guys are streaming on Twitch, that you're playing video games, not just because I love video games, but also if you think about how much it costs per hour and how much entertainment you get per hour for like a video game that you buy, Mm. it's way better, light years better. Worth it. worth yeah worth it than a lot of other options right like what what would it cost you to go spend two hours at the movies uh, a couple of missed gunshots and uh... <laughs> well no nowadays the movies are what like you have the hd i mean the uh, the imax you have to pay an extra five six bucks from the standard price and then you got it oh well i didn't bring no you know they don't allow you snacks. to bring any snacks or drinks in Traffic that, to get there. That now that's more money. It's like by the time you leave the movies, you're spending fifty dollars. Oh yeah. And it's yeah. like And now you can heck? stream it at home. Yeah. And then now you're like, well, you know, what did I get out of that? Right. Right. Yeah. Like I can make my popcorn whatever at home. I could play a video game at home, whatever. But like that video game, last video game I bought was like 50 bucks. Like, so I love that you threw that number out there. But guess what? I'm going to spend way more than two hours playing that video game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That and, replayability and, and also being able to do it from the comfort of your own home is adding to that quality of life that you just uh, better make sure you have solar then. So your electric bill, ain't <laughs> right? I'm going to have to turn off some lights. We're in a power grid uh, <laughs> shortage here or whatever they call. It's about to blow up on us. So definitely yeah. appreciate that. And I, I know our fans out there watching the no order podcast are appreciating this free knowledge that they're getting from Phil from Stars and Stripes Financial Advisors here on just quality of life in general and the gems that he's dropping. So we really thank you for those honorable mentions as well. It's time for number one. What do you got for us on the No Order Podcast with the top five best ways to become a millionaire, Phil? All right. Uh, So this one, it's it's in the news right now, um, tangentially, but it's, it's about that education and your education lining up with what you want your career to be. It, it's so huge. So huge. I, I can't say it enough. Making your, me feel bad here, Phil. Say again? You're making me feel bad. <laughs> I love you, bro. I love you. Hello, <laughs> too, bro. Tell us, tell the people out there why. Tell them why, right. because I think 
you know, it, it has to be said that maybe you might not make some good decisions in your life or you maybe go with what you feel as far as going with your heart or your passions. And now we're running the no order podcast. So, <laughs> all right. All right. So, so here's, here's the argument, right? Is if I get a degree in X and I pursue a degree in X, then as I advance through my career, there's that alignment. I've become a, a, both a, a knowledge master and an experience master in that topic. And so I'm able to get further in my career faster. That means pay raises faster. That means a higher ceiling on, on how far up I can go within that career. Um, I'll just use an example. I've never seen a hospital run by anybody other than a person with a medical degree or a PhD. Never seen it happen, right? So by going and getting a PhD or an MD, they raised the ceiling on how far up the, the career ladder they could go. And they definitely accelerated how fast they'd get the pay raises. That, that trajectory is a lot uh, faster to the top. Yeah. Echelon of yeah. the income bracket, I should say. It, exactly. And then on the on the flip side of that, and what's been in the news a lot is student loans, right? So mm. let's say that there's a misalignment between what you went to college for and what your career is. Well, you paid for college up front by financing it, probably. You got those student loans, mm -hmm. but now you're not making that extra money that you would anticipate by having a college degree. And that's not, that's not a perfect example because most people, even if they got like a bachelor's degree or an associate's degree, they'll still find a job where they make more money than they would have with just a high school degree. So they will have better outcomes. But if you compare that like to a career and what they studied, it's usually not as, it is well paid. I see. Um, and so not a perfect example, cause like you could, uh, somebody in my family, they've got a liberal arts education uh, and, and they studied human rights. They were never gonna get a job that paid well with their degree in human rights. You know, so they pursued a different path mm -hmm. and it was a good path and it pays well and it probably pays better than the human rights path. So there are examples where that doesn't actually flesh out. Sure. But where, where you can, I think it, it's super helpful because the number one vehicle you have for accumulating wealth is what your income is in the first place. And the number one driver of income is educational attainment and experience, right? Experience is going to happen for all of us. The educational attainment thing is optional. Yeah. Yeah. How do I get 10 years of experience before I get out of high school? <laughs> A lot of volunteer no work. Because <laughs> that's what it seems that uh, these jobs are asking for, these career paths are asking for sometimes. But I definitely see what you're saying as far as you're not putting the cart before the horse and also having that attainment factor be lined up with what you go to school for or get that education through in order to be on that career trajectory or that path uh, to, to obtain those goals and not be stuck with these astronomical loans. Yeah. Yeah. It's huge. Um, and I, honestly, I don't think we're going to be able to count on there being like, another get out of jail free card with like loan forgiveness, like what we just saw happen. You know, I think that's a one-time deal. I, I don't see that happening again. Um, I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know, mm -hmm. but you know, like take that one and, and be happy. And then like, let's. <laughs> They're still not getting <laughs> a pass from me from keeping us in the house for uh, two years yeah. straight. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. I think um, those are some great, tips for becoming a millionaire with your top five best ways on the no order podcast. We want to thank you, Phil, for joining us on the no order podcast with your top five best ways to become a millionaire. Number five breakdown through number one, we had the want retirement savings, saving with intention, real estate, and also aligning your education 
versus your career path. Anything else that you wanted to mention? Tell us what you got going on, Phil. We really appreciate you joining us and want to open the floor to you. Yeah, um, I would just say, uh, you know, because I, I got to this place where I could be financially independent, what I'm doing with my life now is I'm serving those people who served our country, service members, veterans, their families, by providing financial advice. So I get to do fun things like, hey, it's a work day, and I came on your podcast, right? So I could like drop some knowledge bombs, you know, spend some time with you guys and talk shop a little bit, right? Like, this is what I love to do. So, you know, if you, if you need financial advice for whatever reason, you know, check me out, stars and stripes, financial advisors.com, um, you know, schedule a meeting with me, free complimentary consultation. Happy to talk to you. And if I can't help you, I'll point you in the direction of somebody that can. Hey, Phil, right? Right. cause you know, a lot of people take, um, their knowledge or their education off of TikTok nowadays. Is there yeah. anything to look out for? Like where they're not giving you the full story, just, you know, maybe mention one thing or something. Um, that, cause I, I do see a lot of people being uh, misguided on, uh, a lot of things when it, you know, comes to, um, you know, like, uh, IULs or, you know, stuff like that where, oh, you're, it's, you know, you're going to get rich doing this. And it's like, well, you didn't read the fine print and you didn't understand, you know, the layout and now you're, you're not going to get rich and you just lost a lot of money. Mm. Yeah. It, it's unfortunate that. People are out there misleading other people. I think most people, it's coming from a good place. They think they understand what they're talking about and they're trying to put out a good, helpful message. But a lot of people have other motivations, right? So I'll, I'll just put it out there. Like, so if, if you're listening to somebody who's talking about insurance, they're probably an insurance salesperson, probably on the back end. If you link into that stuff, you'll find out that they work for insurance company X and they've got an insurance product that they're trying to sell or an annuity or, you know, insert financial product here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why it's so important that a, everybody looks at what this person, where this person works, like what are, what are they, how do they get paid? B, what is, what, what's their backgrounds? Do they have the experience and knowledge to talk about this? Do they have the education to talk about this? Or are they just a salesperson, right? Like, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to somebody who calls themselves a doctor unless they had a medical degree. I don't want to go get my insurance from somebody who doesn't know anything about finance, right? Like, if you used to be a teacher, and I'm not intentionally throwing shade on anybody, but if you used to be a teacher and you're a year into selling insurance and you're on TikTok giving me advice about insurance, I, yeah, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, that, and that's what I'm saying is because I hear, you know, some people, oh, you have you tried this? And it's like, you didn't read into that, did you? You didn't look at the fine print or you didn't see what you have to do to grow that. He told you, a and C, he didn't tell you B. And, you know, there's usually a, a point, you know, missing when they explain stuff in these, you know, 30 second clips or anything, mm -hmm. you know, and I just wanted to mention that out there because a lot of people, that's why they don't get into finance or they don't help themselves is because it's like, I'm too scared or I, I, I like you said, the education, you know, or they already got you know, screwed by somebody and they're like, I'm not taking that risk again. I rather have my money to sit here and not do nothing because I'm not taking the risk of losing it again. Yeah. And, and I mean, like that's, it's sad. I'll say it's sad because there are a lot of people out there taking advantage of other people. Right. And, and that spoils it for people. Right. And, and there's too many ways that people can get scams to name them all. But what I'll, what I'll say is, if somebody's trying to sell you a product, a financial product, be wary of the advice that they give you around making that decision. And that's one of the reasons like I set my business up and I know we didn't talk about this, but I set my business up to be a, fin a fee only financial advisor. I don't sell products and I like that position 
because then somebody can come to me with a question about insurance or, or an annuity or a retirement vehicle. And I'm not getting commissions or kickbacks or anything like that. I can just speak truth to power about what the situation is and whether or not I think it makes sense for a person, right? So I would say like, if you're really, if you're really like weighing a serious decision about insurance or, you know, a retirement plan or something like that, and you, you honest to goodness can't figure it out, find a fee only financial advisor that doesn't have skin in the game. Find somebody that's not going to earn a commission off the sale of a product. And then you can start getting some honest to goodness, unbiased advice. Um, and, I, and I wish I could go over every type of, you know, sleazy financial <laughs> product sales out there. But there's not there's enough stuff. hours in the day. Yeah. And I think that's a great point that you bring up that people think that they aren't out there these businesses like stars and stripes financial advisors that will give you that information but they're not trying to sell you anything they think that everybody is trying to sell you or scam you or or get out there but you just have to do your research on it you know set those boundaries of boundaries of what you want to do or what you need to accomplish and then also find these places that you can get the information without them trying to have a sleazy salesman, you know, take your firstborn child or whatnot, you know, and it costs an arm and a leg to do that uh, for sure. So we definitely will drop your socials in the chat as well. And also can be found on the YouTube video and on Spotify, of course. So we want to thank you again for joining us here on the No Order Podcast. Did you have any more questions, uh, Bear, or want to jump into some previous topics? Because I, I know Phil oh, definitely yeah. has more knowledge on other things other than just financial advice there. <laughs> no, I, I think he had a you know a great perspective on, mm. on keeping it simple, too, where he wasn't I think overbearing people, and, but he, he caught a lot of people's interest on the little things. Because a lot of people think that you have to have all this stuff already and you can't just start today and say, hey, you know what? This is where I'm going to go with it. Yeah. You don't always have to have a $10 million loan from your dad, you know, in order to <laughs> achieve what you want to do. But it is going to take a little bit of work. It's going to take some research and it's also going to take friends. It's going to take other people in your corner. It's going to take, you know, advice and uh the right people who have that background and knowledge and aligning yourself strategically and correctly to uh, achieve those goals in, in the long run. And it doesn't happen overnight, you know, maybe for some people, but yeah, for the, and it's remember, not always the it's, rule. You it's know? work no matter what you right. have to work for. it. Right. You may see that person putting in work, but also who you're following to see who's achieving the work. Everyone wants to be Michael Jordan, but they don't see the work that Michael exactly. Jordan's getting. They just want to attain that. But I'm sure that that goat or that top player or person, whoever it may be, uh, rapper, musician, whoever it may be, is going to other people who have the knowledge to be able to find that out, reading and putting in that work. I love that analogy. I absolutely love that analogy because no, no athlete got to the top of their game without a coach, without a mm -hmm. trainer. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Like you need those people in your corner, right. To, to be able to optimize whatever it is you're trying to achieve in life. Absolutely. We appreciate you joining us on the No Order Podcast, Phil. Uh, if you want to hang out with us, we are going to be just hanging out in the chat, but uh, we want to thank you again for, your top five ways to become a millionaire here on the no order podcast. Thank you so much again. Appreciate you. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys for having me on. I really appreciate it. I love watching your podcast, seeing you on Twitch, man. Um, and one of these days we're going to have to figure out so I can play Mario Kart 64 with you guys. Oh, nice. And get down on this. All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, if you're ever in the Bay Area, you know, uh, you got uh, some friends out here. So come and join us and um, definitely enjoy uh, Atlanta out there. It's been so oh, long yeah. since I've uh, been to Atlanta. I think, I don't know, maybe eight, ten years <laughs> now. 2018 was when I was in Atlanta. Dude, you, uh, you got to see some great stuff out there, though, too. And yes. I definitely want to check. I didn't. I was only in Atlanta for maybe 48 hours, so I didn't get to go see the 
uh, aquarium or anything like that. So I definitely want hey, to. Hey, you do know that. what? I, you know, because we're from California, we don't really see a lot of, uh, or never rarely strip clubs. The, the no, <laughs> the the thunderstorms. When you stay in uh, a high rise um, hotel and you're watching that come out, it it's pretty nice to see. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> you're a little scared, but you're like, man, this is <laughs> this is something special right here. Yeah. I don't I don't know how it is living in it, you know, where you're like, oh shit. <laughs> Honestly, I love it. Like there, don't get me wrong, there's always like that factor where you're like, oh, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. a lightning strike hits kind of close or whatever. But uh there's something about like the cool breeze, the moisture mm. in the air, the rain. It's kind of like it's it's very peaceful with just like those lightning hits though, and then you're like, oh a little jolt. Yeah. Exactly. Bring you back to reality. Oh, yeah. same yeah. movie. <laughs> Bear, that's how I feel about earthquakes. So they wake me up. I'm like, oh, a little back rub, you know? Man, I I really, uh, you know, it's crazy. We have all these little earthquakes all the time. I never feel them. Like you sleep it right yeah, through it, bro. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the first time I uh, I experienced an earthquake, I was like, I didn't know what it was at first. Like things started shaking because it wasn't like like a really big one. And I was like, is something wrong with my head? And like I looked, <laughs> I looked at the person next to me, and they were like, they could see I was confused about what was happening because I, I grew up in Florida, right? Mm-hmm. There's no earthquakes there. It, and they're like, Phil, it's an earthquake. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, something's wrong with your head. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 man, it could be scary, you know, but I, I'd rather, I think I'd rather have that than just maybe like tornadoes. I mean, oh, Midwest yeah. or, you know, thunder lightning storms, obviously meeting down in Florida, you know, I could deal with the humidity and, you know, thunderstorms and lightning storms down there. So I, I think I'd rather just take my chances on, uh, once in a every hundred years or so occurrence <laughs> with the earthquakes. Yeah. Anything that we should do when we're down in um, in Atlanta that you recommend? Man, I you know honestly, what I would say is like go check out some of the neighborhoods. There's a lot of like little neighborhoods all around Atlanta that are historic, and they just got they got a cool environment. They've got cool shops, good places to eat, beautiful homes and stuff that you can just kind of like walk through the neighborhood and check out. For me, that's something I enjoy doing around Mm -hmm. here. It's uh, getting to know like kind of like the little microcosm community, right? Like this tiny little community with all their little stuff. Bill's telling you to go to the hood and uh, get dropped off. (laughs) (laughs) Only kidding, of course. Well, thanks well, so much for joining us, for sure, and, and we really appreciate it. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, just thanks for having me. I, I appreciate this, and, uh, you know, keep keep in touch. For and, sure. And uh, I'll, I'll drop you a line soon. Sounds good. Well, thanks again. Uh, we really appreciate you joining us on the No Order Podcast. Be sure to check us out and give us a follow on Patreon. Uh, definitely follow us on Twitch. We're trying to run up those follower, followers, tr- uh, twitch.tv slash Club, and we want to thank everyone who joined us in the chat as well. We really appreciate you, Phil. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you, too. All right, man. Peace. Have a good one.